Welcome back to the Morning Blend. Well, a lot changes with a woman's body when she becomes pregnant, including her hormones. And here to talk about one of the complications of those changes, gestational diabetes, is Dr. Ricardo Mastrolia. He's a maternal fetal medicine specialist with the Aurora Healthcare System. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thank nice you for having me. Nice to have you back. Yeah, we appreciate you being here. Let's talk a little bit about what gestational diabetes is and who's at risk. Gestational diabetes is what we term glucose intolerance diagnosed for the first time in pregnancy. So abnormally elevated blood glucose levels that is recognized for the first time during pregnancy. At what point during the pregnancy do you make this determination that someone may have gestational diabetes? As all women are at risk for developing gestational diabetes, we generally do what's termed a one hour glucose tolerance test at approximately 24 to 28 weeks gestation. That's universal screening. So about halfway through. Correct. And what if people like this happened to me fail <laughs> that first test? Then you have to go back for a three hour That's glucose correct. tolerance test. And it's about drinking kind of like a sugary drink and then That's having correct. blood drawn to see how your body can process it, right? Correct. It, it essentially is a challenge to your body. Um, you ingest a large glucose load, and as you stated eloquently, we see how your body sort of handles that glucose load. Okay. okay. I think some women who especially are at home, you know, they're pregnant and they're watching, they're familiar with the term, but I would bet that there's a lot of misconceptions about it. What are some of those misconceptions? Well, I think many patients who we come across feel that gestational diabetes is a diagnosis isolated to pregnancy and it happens only as a result of being pregnant. When in fact, a patient who is diagnosed with gestational diabetes may have a predisposition. For example, they may have a family history, they may be obese. Um, that predisposition may oftentimes be unmasked in pregnancy. The way I view it is much the same way you would view placing a patient at risk for heart disease on a treadmill. Pregnancy is that hormonal treadmill and can unmask gestational diabetes. Moreover, a diagnosis of gestational diabetes portends an increased risk for developing overt or type 2 diabetes lifetime. So it doesn't begin and end with pregnancy. There may be a predisposition. Furthermore, if you are diagnosed with it, it warrants following after you have your baby to determine whether or not you are at risk. That's a great point because I think a lot of people think, oh, it's this limited yeah. time where you're going to have this specific form of diabetes where the reality is that it doesn't necessarily end with the pregnancy and can be an indicator that you could have problems later um, or after the pregnancy or pregnancies end for, you could be at risk for type 2. That's mm -hmm. correct. Approximately 50 percent of women over a 15-year time period postpartum will develop overt diabetes. Now, wh how is it treated? Because I, I was worried that um, if, I, if I didn't pass that three-hour one, that then I was going to have to give up a lot of different foods during my pregnancy, and that is one way you treat it, right, with a very restrictive diet? Correct. Lifestyle, in a word. Mm -hmm. uh, so diet is the first step. Medication is wonderful. I'm a minimalist. We all are in that regard. So the best first step is diet modification, healthier habits, eating better, decreasing the amount of carbohydrates you're taking in, increasing healthy proteins and so forth. And oftentimes patients will do very well on diet therapy alone. Okay. What do you think is so unique about where you work at the Aurora Maternal Medical Center? Our center takes a multidisciplinary approach. Um, one of the tenets of maternal fetal medicine is not just treating high-risk patients during pregnancy, but also recognizing which patients are at risk. Preconceptual counseling, for example, is very important. Recognizing patients who are at risk, implementing lifestyle modification, diet, exercise, and so forth, for example, can help decrease that risk of developing gestational diabetes. That is part of what we do. During pregnancy, looking at eating habits, helping modify and make healthier eating choices. Um, beyond the pregnancy itself and managing those sugars, we take a look at the baby. Certainly the baby is at risk for developing what's termed fetal macrosomia, a big baby. Um, these are risks that are associated with high glucose levels. Taking a look at the baby after it's born, risk for low blood glucose levels um, and jaundice. Going forward, taking that multidisciplinary approach um, to the sort of long-term perspective of healthcare is monitoring those patients for risk of developing overt diabetes 10 to 15 years after they've had their baby. So 
a multidisciplinary approach, I think, I think is a central tenet to what we provide. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the part about having a large baby because we've talked a lot this morning about gestational diabetes, how it affects the mother, what it means in terms of po possible future potential risk. But it does have an impact on the baby as well. When you eat and you're pregnant, you're not just feeding yourself, but you're feeding the baby as well. And there can be some negative consequences to having um, high um, blood glucose levels. That's correct. Um, babies can grow larger than you would want them to, um, fetal macrosomia. Uh, babies may have hypoglycemia, low blood glucose levels at the time of birth, increased risk for uh, what we call shoulder dystocia, the baby's shoulder sort of becoming lodged in the birth canal, um, increased risk for cesarean delivery, increased risk for neonatal jaundice and so forth. Um, a lot of com potential complications sure. and that's why it's great that women are routinely checked at, as you mentioned, about 24 weeks during their pregnancy. People can actually make an appointment at the Aurora Women's Pavilion and find out more about this very specialized part of your center, the Maternal Metabolic Center, by calling to schedule an appointment. It's 414-855-2912 or you can visit aurora.org slash AMMC for more information. A pleasure to have you Thanks. this Thank morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank it was you. great. Yeah. We appreciate Thank you it. For